first thing I want to ask you is, um, you know, you've obviously been a coach, you know, at the prep school level for a long time. Um, and, and now we're seeing a bunch of, you know, new schools pop up every year, it seems like. So what do you think, in your opinion, you know, makes Brewster Academy different? Well, I, I think the one thing that that uh, makes Brewster, as well as a lot of other schools out there, different is, you know, the tradition and the history of the school. You know, I always tell kids that the school itself has been here for over 200 years. You know, so the school's been here a lot longer than, for example, the basketball team maybe has had any any level of success. Right. OK. Uh, yeah, that makes a big difference. Um, OK, so obviously you've had, you know, a lot of NBA alumni. You've coached Donovan Mitchell, Devontae Graham, Will Barton, you know, guys like that. You know, I'm curious, what are some things, you know, some common characteristics you saw in those guys, you know, at a, at a young age in high school um, that may have helped them, you know, get to the league? I, I think there are a couple things. One, uh, I think all of the guys, for the most part, that we've had play in the league and, and stay in the league were, were gym rats. They love to be in the gym. Um, you had to, you know, kick them out of the gym. You know, they would they would be in the gym all day if they could. And then I think the other thing is just humility. You know, guys that didn't take themselves too seriously. Um, they love the, the process of getting better, but, you know, we're, we're very humble. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are some, I know you guys have had some like stacked teams in the past. What are a couple teams, what were your best teams in your opinion? Well, I think any, any of the teams that won a, a national prep championship or a New England championship have to be considered, you know, some of our better teams. You know, I think when you look at the success that they had when they left here, I think that's the separator for a lot of them. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, the 2010 team won the New England championship and our program's first national prep championship. That was uh, Will Barton, C.J. Fair, Melvin Edgem, Nadir Tharp, um, Austin Carroll, Mo Walker. That was a pretty talented team. Uh, a couple of years later, the 2012 team won the national prep championship that had uh, Samaj Christian, T.J. Warren, Mitch McGarry, Jakar Sampson, uh, Jalen Reynolds. Aaron Thomas, that was a, a loaded team. Um, and then certainly the two teams that, that Donovan played on, um, 2014 and 2015, the 2014 team had uh, Devontae Graham, Donovan Mitchell, um, Isaac Copeland, Jared Terrell, Jonah Bolden. And then the following year, Donovan's senior year, um, was a loaded team as well with Donovan, Jalen Adams, uh, Marcus Derrickson, Jared Reuter, um, Justin Simon. So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to, to, it's hard to separate, but the, the one constant is I, I've been very fortunate to have had a lot of, a lot of talented teams. And then, you know, the, the 2017 team may not have as many of the big names, uh, but they did something by going undefeated that hadn't been done in the New England um, prep league at the highest level in over 20 years. Okay. You know, going back to obviously Donovan Mitchell, that's a huge name in the basketball world right now. What was his kind of what was his recruitment like in high school? Was he you know, was he hyped up like like you'd assume or was he kind of under the radar and then blew up at some point? Yeah, I think when Donovan first came here, uh, he was a little bit under the radar. Um, You know, obviously a a freakish athlete, uh, very talented baseball player. And I think I think that that is really why a lot of people didn't know or outside of maybe the new England region didn't know Donovan because he was injured his sophomore year playing baseball and it caused him to miss the entire uh, grassroots season. Um, So he didn't really, you know, wasn't a main fixture that summer prior to coming to Brewster. And then, you know, at the end of his first year here is really when his recruiting kind of took off. Okay, that's interesting about the baseball. Um, okay, so now, obviously, you've had a lot of successful guys play in college, too. You know, I know you currently, Buddy Beheim, right? Who are some kind of guys right now in, in NCAA that are uh, doing well that, that are alumni? Um, I think, you know, some of the top players in, in college this year uh, would be Buddy Beheim at Syracuse, um, Isaiah Mucius at Wake Forest. Uh, Miles Norris at uh, Santa Barbara, 
Then you have, um, you know, Matt Cross will be a transfer this year at Louisville is extremely talented. Uh, Kadari Richmond is transferred from Syracuse to Seton Hall. So uh, I, Jamal Mashburn is transferred uh, to New Mexico, followed Coach Patino. So, you know, one of the one of the great joys that I have is, you know, getting the alerts on my phone at the end of one of our alumni's games and can mm-hmm. check and see how they did if if I wasn't able to catch the game live on television. So. Right. Okay. So shifting into like your current team this year, I know you got a couple big time guys. I saw they got some got Duke offers. Um, I'm sure you got, you know, some high major, mid major, low major guys. Um, just kind of, I'm interested to know what your team's looking like this year. Yeah, it, it, it's arguably our, uh, our youngest team we've ever had. Um, a, a bulk of our core guys are actually juniors and sophomores which isn't too common in our program uh, where it's dominated by historically by uh, fifth year seniors or post-grads. We do have um, three guys that have already made commitments and that will sign early. Uh, DeSante Bowen is um, going to Iowa. Reed Bailey is committed to Davidson and Bube Moma is, is committed to Lehigh. Um, so what is, what does a typical day look like, um, as a basketball player? Yeah, in the fall, they'll typically do, uh, strength and conditioning in the morning before classes, uh, from seven to eight 30. Um, then they'll have classes from nine 30 till about two 30. And then they will be in the gym in the afternoon again, from three till about six, whether it's open gym, strength and conditioning again, or more individual workouts. Then they'll go to dinner at six, and then they'll have study hall in the evening uh, from eight to 9.30. So it is a pretty structured, pretty regimented day. So is the biggest kind of selling point for that is, you know, it's going to be like your college day. Is that kind of what you tell your guys? Because I know for sure that's not how my days looked like in high school. Yeah, definitely. Again, what we try to do is, stimulate to some degree what it'll be like when they leave here and matriculate to a college program just in terms of time management you know how the day is really structured for them from you know before classes you know in in the past we would always do our workouts before school at 6 a.m i guess one of the positives of the pandemic is we don't start classes at eight any longer we actually start later at 9 30 so we're able to get you know a lot of work in in the morning then have classes, and then more work in the afternoon before they have their academic study hall commitments in the evening. Okay, what is, uh, what's your schedule looking like this year? Do you guys play like regionally? I'm sure you do some national stuff. Who are you guys playing this year? Yeah, again, I, I, it's, it's a common question that I get when people inquire and, and express interest in Brewster is, you know, I, I don't know where the term started, but, you know, do you play a national schedule? Yeah. And, you know, even before I was at Brewster, just from because I was from this region, I knew how talented the New England Prep School League was. And I think, again, I'm admittedly biased, Mm -hmm. but I think that our league is the premier league in the country because, one, it's dominated by fifth year seniors or postgraduates. You know, so it's a men's league where it's 18, 19 year olds. You play college rules. You know, it's, it's two 20 minute halves. We have the college three point line, 94 foot floors opposed to a high school floor. But I think what separates our league and, and this is a, a novel concept that's, you know, over the last, I guess, five to 10 years, you see a lot more teams traveling to play in big time events. Yep. And that's a great opportunity for the kids. We've certainly have done our share of that over the years. Um, but I prefer league play because again it simulates what it's going to be like in college where you have to go into somebody else's gym for example we have to get on the bus go to st thomas more in connecticut play a jerry quinn coach team whose coach quinn has been there for 40 plus years Mm -hmm. in their gym with their fans Mm -hmm. in a hostile environment as opposed to getting on a plane and finding high level competition in front of a neutral fan base where it's not exactly a hostile environment. So we're, we're very fortunate that 
the, the schedule that we put together is all within driving distance. So we don't miss any academic commitments. But again, we go into somebody else's gym and have to compete and, and, and win on the road. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, obviously, you, you've you seen um, how teenagers work like generationally. Um, first of all, it's like, these you know this generation social media is like a really big thing like that's just the truth um so how do you you know i see you're active on all social medias like how did you how do you engage with them and then how have you you know <clears throat> how have you changed over time you know to to be you know have a relationship with your players yeah i i think that the the initially and, and really the main purpose of of my social media use is really just to celebrate our alumni. So if you look at <laughs> over the years, when I'll post during the season, I'll never even post our current team's scores. Instead, I'm, I'm celebrating, you know, how, you know, guys that were here a year ago, 10 years ago that are still playing, whether it's in college, professionally, how they're doing because I think that's important to our alumni, their classmates, their faculty, their former teachers, their dorm parents. So, you know, I, again, I, I use social media for that purpose, just to celebrate, you know, what, what some of our alums are doing now, whether they're still playing or, you know, married with kids, et cetera, still yeah. in the game, coaching, scouting, et cetera. Yeah, for sure. So that's kind of, I wanted to lead that into the biggest, you know, storyline, I guess, in the last year, NIL, right? Have you kind of talked to any of your guys about that? I know I saw buddies doing well in that. So like, what are your overall thoughts on that? Yeah, when, when uh, NIL went into effect this summer, I was um, contacted by a few people that were interested in who the alumni were and, and connected them. So I, I, I connected Buddy to a couple of different uh, organizations, uh, Kadari, Jamal, and, and those guys that I thought would have the best opportunity to to benefit from the the new rules uh, going forward. I'm not sure. I'm sure at some point we'll have some current guys mm -hmm. that will be in that position to to benefit, which is awesome. Um, you know, at this point we don't, but I think in the in the near future we certainly will. Yeah, uh, I'm curious. Like, what's your what's your relationship with like the grassroots scene out there? Like, do you go to watch? Do you like go to tournaments and watch? Obviously, you know, all these uh, directors and stuff, but like, are you kind of embedded in that stuff too from afar? No, not really. I think what a lot of people don't uh, really understand or, or know, Nate, is I started as an AAU coach. Um, okay. you know, I started my own AAU program when I was 19 years old and I was coaching, you know, 17 year olds. And I was just really, really fortunate when I began that. You know, I had some talented guys from from the state of New Hampshire who went on to have really good careers, but more importantly, they were from basketball families. So the Friel brothers played for me, whose dad who has since passed was a longtime coach at the University of New Hampshire. I had um, the Fosher boys worked out with us and played with us, and their dad was the former head coach at Dartmouth. Uh, in fact, Ryan Bamford, who is now the athletic director at UMass, he played on one of my first AAU teams. So I, I started as an AAU coach. Uh, fortunately, I don't have to go beat the bushes for, you know, players at AAU events. I, I, I'll go occasionally, but I'm not certainly out every, every weekend in the spring or summer watching because if, if I wanted to do that, I probably would be a college coach and yeah. I have no desires to do that. You know, I'll go occasionally if it's within driving distance to see a, a few guys. That's interesting. So what's your, you know, I've seen pictures of your campus and stuff. It looks really nice. Like what, what are some like cool, cool parts about that? I know it's on by a lake, right? Yeah. Our campus is, is, uh, is on Lake Winnipesaukee in Wolfboro. And what's unique about our campus is within, we're within walking distance of really the town of Wolfboro. So, you know, just a two minute walk is, is the small town, which, you know, we're, we're fortunate because a lot of these campuses are beautiful absolutely spectacular, but they're in pretty remote locations. You know, I went to prep school myself and had a great experience, but we had the gas station across the street. That was it. Here, our, our kids have, 
again, it's not a booming metropolis by any means, but you know, there's at least restaurants and grocery stores and a little town that they can have some some independence to walk in and in and out of during the day.